This is Gene Bailey. He hosts a show called Flashpoint. It's on Kenneth Copeland's TV network called The Victory Network. It is an extremist TV show owned and operated by people who seemingly are in love with Donald Trump. It is a full-blown MAGA TV show. Any MAGA-related news or goings-on, you will find right here. All of the latest propaganda methods or techniques or tactics that they're going with, you'll find it here. So I wanted to listen to what they had to say on this MAGA TV show. On their latest episode, the title of this one is They Are Feeling the Heat. It'll be worth a watch anyways. Let's give it a watch, see what they have to say for themselves. And while we watch, we are going to play Super Mario 3. I just got through watching a Greg Locke thing earlier, and I played the beginning half of Mario 3 in that. So, yeah, we're going to play Mario 3. I think I'm on world, like, 5 or 4 or something like that. And, uh, and we're going to watch some Flashpoint while we do. Anyways, all right, let's listen to these guys and uh, play some Mario. You are watching Flashpoint. We're glad you're with us tonight. Let's not say it every week. You need to go share this program everywhere you can on all those social media sites. Listen. Their average age, their average viewer age is probably like 77 or something. Like, it's pretty high up there. We get we have people getting stopped by the police that love Flashpoint, and I think that's wonderful. We're, we're making a difference. You're making a difference. And what? That people are getting stopped by police that like Flashpoint. What are they talking about? We're glad you're with us tonight. Going to be a great program. Let me show you who's with me tonight. Uh, Jesse DePlanis, Lance Wallnow, and Pastor Hank Kuhneman. Glad you're back, brother Jesse. You're getting to be a regular around Thank here. You. Oh, dude, Jesse Duplantis is a nutter butter of epic proportions. If you're not familiar with this guy, his his peak fame was probably his interaction with Kenneth Copeland. This is from, I think, 2016. No, 2015, I believe. And this is where Copeland was kind of defending his purchase of a big, expensive private jet, a $45 million jet. $45 million, dude. Who has that kind of money? Brother Copeland, I was flying home from a meeting, and I had come out of a glorious meeting. I had just finished, me and Creflo Dollar were preaching. Creflo Dollar, another full-blown scam artist, dude. Nothing but a scam artist, all these people. Copeland and Duplantis included. A glorious meeting. So I was, for lack of a better way to say it, I was spiritually high. I said, people yeah. were saved, yeah. touched, and blessed. Got in the plane that God so graciously gave us, and we're flying home. As I was going home, the Lord, real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? Now, you know, I thought that's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly, Lord. He said, do you really like it? And I thought, well, yes, Lord. He said, then he said this, so that's it? I didn't know how to handle it, but I went, what? He said, you're going to let your faith stagnate? Now, when he said that, that shocked me. I went, whoa, wait. I literally unbuckled my seatbelt, my plane, I stood up. My pilots looked around and said, do you need something? I said, no, no, I'm talking to God right now. And he, just, <laughs> and he went back to flying. I said. Yeah, because he's creeped out, weirded out by somebody standing up and just talking to themselves, pretending it was God. That makes sense to be weirded out by that. Lord, I don't think I was letting my faith stagnate. He said, so this is all I could ever do. I said, you want, you, you're you trying to tell me something. You couldn't have done that on an airliner. Now, here is Kenneth Copeland's defense of owning a $45 million private jet. No, sir. No way. Stand up and say, what'd you say, Lord? No. Okay, no, yeah. And the guy sitting over there saying, what the hell does he think he's doing? <laughs> you can't do you that. You can't do that. No, no. That Dude, do you have any idea how much money $45 million is? Let me try to put it into perspective for you. Kenneth Copeland could have flown first class every single day Sunday to Saturday for 130 years, anywhere in the world for 130 years, first class for the amount of money he spent on that private jet. This, this is so important. And those of you that are, that are just now coming into these things, um, in, in the first place, Jesse and, 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 and I and, and others, Keith Moore and Creflo and all of us, they're they're all scam artists, every last one of them that he named. 
the world is in such a shape, we can't get there without this. That's right. Got totally, totally. To have this, we would have, the mess that the airlines are in today, I would have to stop, I'm being very conservative at least 75 to 80, more like 90% of what we're doing, because you can't get there and from here. It's impossible. So we You're telling me that there isn't a single airline anywhere in the world that goes to the locations that you preach at? Is that what you're trying to communicate to me right now? Just the whole thing is nonsense. It's all made up. It's fabricated. And as I said, the dude could have flown first class to any location in the world. Why does this stupid turtle keep coming back? Any location in the world, first class, every day of the week, 52 weeks a year for 130 years for the amount of money he spent on that stupid private jet. So I'm sorry, man. I'm just not buying it. We ha and, and this was such a good illustration. I just, <laughs> the, the Lord impressed me. That's why we're on that airplane. We can talk to oh, God. Glory we to can, God. We, it's true. We, it, it's, when I was flying for Oral Roberts, the uh, brother Deweese, my, my mm -hmm. boss on the airplane, he said, now, Kenneth, this is sanctuary. It protects the anointing on, on uh, uh, brother, brother Roberts. Roberts. And he said, you keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to him unless he talks. Dude, the arrogance on these people. You keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to him unless he talks to you. Just insane. Because when he's on a meeting, he doesn't talk to anybody but God. Now, Oral used to fly airlines. Right. But it, even back mm -hmm. there then, man, mm -hmm. it, it got to the place where it was agitating his spirit. Sure. People coming up to him. He right. had become famous. And How frustrating. People want to, you know, meet him or want to say hi to him or whatever. How terrible, huh? That's awful. Poor guy. Now, I, I get it. You know, some people just want to be left alone or whatever. And that's fine. You know, wear sunglasses and a hat if that's the case. Like, I guess that he's above that or that that's that's beneath him, apparently, to do something like that. Uh, you can do things to, like, make it less obvious that you're famous. Personally, I love it when people come up to me and say, hey, and, you know, I love your stuff or whatever else. That's awesome. I mean, sometimes I'm in a rush, so I would prefer they just say, hey, and I'll say, hey, and I don't know, maybe get a picture or something, and then I move on. But, you know, I, I don't see what the big deal is. Like, why are people so pissed off about this? It's just bizarre to me. It, it feels like they're kind of full of themselves. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not famous enough, so I don't know. Maybe if I were more famous... It would be frustrating. Who knows? They want him to pray for them and right. all that. You you can't you you can't manage that today. Right. The, this dope filled world. Right. And get in an air. Get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. Oh boy. Yeah. That was the line that really got him crucified by the media. Basically saying that regular people are like demons, pretty much. Not the, not the sharpest crayon in the box, I would say, right? And then when pressed on that and asking questions like, what did you mean by this? Please clarify. He just kept saying, are you taking me out of context? You don't understand what I'm trying to communicate. No, no, we don't. Tell us. What are you talking about? Clarify. Now's your chance. We're asking you, what did you mean when you said that? And then he just went off on you know, a big tangent about the Bible and stuff completely unrelated. Like, we don't have time to go through all of this stuff. I just wanted to kind of introduce you to who Jesse Duplantis was. But that's what this whole uh, interview right here was all about, was trying to get that context. And he kept just saying, oh, you're taking me out of context. I know, exactly, yes. Tell me. Tell me what you meant. Bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Oh boy. We wrestle not with Okay, that that smile was just entirely too creepy. Anyway, that's who Jesse Duplantis is. That's kind of how he got like really really famous was by sitting down with Kenneth Copeland while he made a massive fuck up basically. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh let's let's keep listening to old uh Duplantis here and see what he has to say for himself. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, it's an honor to be with you guys. You know what I'm saying? It it's really is a blessing. I don't, part I don't like about it, I'm the oldest one on here. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're glad so, you're but, here. <laughs> somebody told me uh, that I was a grow, aging gracefully. I guess that's a nice compliment. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I'll, I'll take that one any day, yeah. That's good. Uh, Lance, beautiful jacket you're sporting tonight. Thank you very much. This is courtesy of Troy Duhon, uh, who is a friend of mine who said, just pulled over the side of the road, said, we got to change your wardrobe and bought me this jacket. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important to have good friends. Uh Dude, actually, that jacket looks like complete garbage. I'm sorry, man. It looks terrible. It's like all loose fitting and all over the place. I mean, the color could work. And, you know, the shirt, the tie, and the jacket, all three match each other. That's really important when dealing with, like, jackets and stuff, suit jackets. Um, I feel like I know a lot about suits because I grew up Jehovah's Witness. Like, I, I don't wear suits outside of that, never have, but I'm, like, a suit expert thanks to Jehovah's Witnesses. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's just a really terrible, ill-fitting suit right there that we're looking at. It's just not good at all, seems to me. Uh, Pastor Hank, always good to see you, sir, there. Is it cold Thank in you. Omaha? Yeah, hey, we're supposed to get uh, almost a foot of snow here tomorrow, and uh, I'm not the guy that got pulled over by the police officer who watches Flashpoint, just to set the record straight. I think that was Lance. No, no, I'm not going to say. I won't, I'll, I'll just well, you give you. Dude, what the hell is all this about? Did one of them get pulled over by a cop and then let go because they recognize him from Flashpoint? If that's true, then they are about to describe true political corruption, like true, disgusting corruption based on the politics of a, another person. And they should be like, they. I, I mean, I don't know the situation, so let's just listen and see what they say about it. Pat in the chat, if heaven was real, I would love to be a fly on the pearly gates and watch these mega pastors get it, not get into heaven. I imagine the look on their face would be priceless. Oh, absolutely. There's no chance. I mean, they don't, th their interpretation of the Bible does not match what the Bible actually says at all. They fleece gullible suckers out of every penny they own. That's it. That's what they're all about. That's what they've always been about. I mean, hell, Kenneth Copeland even wrote a book, apparently, titled... Uh, the Secrets of Prosperity Gospel or something like that. It's just nonsense, dude, all of it. They're, they are scam artists. They're straight-up scam artists, as far as I'm concerned. But, Gene, you should clarify. A policeman pulled someone over, and, <laughs> yeah, and what and, happened? All right, so the story is he pulled Josh over, and, <laughs> and Josh, he said, where are you going? He says, I'm... Josh? Who's Josh? I'm going to Omaha to work with... Uh, yeah. You know, Flashpoint TV show I work with, and he goes, "Oh, well, I know Flashpoint. I love that show." And he lets him go. He was speeding, <laughs> and he that's true, full-blown corruption, right there. That's corruption. That is absolutely unacceptable. That's fucking disgusting, and they're admitting it. I got to write this down. I got to find somebody to report this to. Seriously. Where can we report these assholes to? I don't know, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, and then we'll start a campaign to have it reported. I mean, it's it's hard to know because they didn't give specifics. Where was he? Was he in Omaha? Was he in Nebraska? It's hard to know, so it's hard to know who to report it to. He let him go. <laughs> he's above Lawless. only and not below. He there is above. And but he was doing, <laughs> shall, we, shall we say how fast he was going? No, stop it. Might as well. He was going a hundred miles an hour. Now, Josh, brother Copeland's going to find out about that, and he's going to he's going to have a word with you. Holy fucking shit, dude! This guy was going a hundred miles an hour. Sixty-five is the speed limit, unless otherwise defined in uh, on highways in the United States. That could very possibly lead to more than just a speeding ticket. That could lead to, like, criminal charges, reckless driving, um, and all kinds of other stuff. That is insane! Holy shit! Guys going... And Lance Walna and uh, 
what's his name here, Hank Kuneman, wisely said before he said, should we let him know how fast he was going? They wisely said no. Intelligent. That is absolutely insane and wrong on every level. I cannot believe they let somebody go who is going 100 miles an hour. Are you fucking kidding me? He could have killed somebody. That is nuts. Dereliction of duty on the part of that police officer. He needs to be fired from his fucking job and never allowed to work in another police station. Not for political beliefs. You know, I have a problem with that, but because he fucking let somebody go who's going a hundred miles a fucking hour. That is unacceptable, dude. Unacceptable. You know, the law doesn't matter unless everybody is treated equally under the law. There is no law unless everyone is treated equally. This is nuts. We need to be watching. Listen to the, or watch their reactions here. Let's just step back like a few seconds. Listen to this whole story again. Watch their reactions. Should clarify, a policeman pulled someone over and <laughs> yeah, and what and, happened? All right, so the story is he pulled Josh over and... and <laughs> Josh, I assume, is like one of their producers or something. Josh, he said, where are you going? He says, I'm going to Omaha to work with, uh, yeah. you know, Flashpoint TV show I work with and... He goes, oh, well, I know Flash. I love that show. And he lets him go. He was speeding. <laughs> and he let him go. Because he's above Lawless. only and not below. He there is above and not. But he was doing, <laughs> shall we below. Shall we say how fast he was going? No. Show oh. it. Might as well. <laughs> he was going 100 miles an hour. Now, Josh, Brother Copeland's going to find out about that. And he's going he's gonna to have a word with you. We need to be watching. That's fucking insane, dude. Hank Kuneman knows. Hank Kuneman knows. Don't don't air your like flagrant dismissal of the law in front of the world. I don't know who we would report this to, but this needs to be reported, right? Like you're going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit and a cop lets you go because of who you are. You know, that could have been that the cop could have reasonably given you a warning for something like that. Um, so it would be really hard to prove, like, political corruption for something like that. But 100 miles an hour, that is endangering other people's lives. There is nothing okay about that. All right. There we go. There's that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into tonight's topics, I want to talk to you about Genesis 26, 18. Are you ready for this? Genesis 26, 18, I'm just going to read part of it. Isaac digged again the wells of water which they dug in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. So why am I reading that? Yeah, why are you reading that? That makes no sense. It's because we've got two jobs to do here. As Christians, conservative patriots in America, we're going to see our nation change. We're going to, America shall be saved. But you and I, we're going to go redig those wells of revival because I don't care what happens in the political world and government structure, that has to change. But the only way that's going to change and change for good is the spiritual climate of this nation. And we need, I, I, if you're a Christian, you're a believer, I know you're believing with me, we need a revival. We need a turning back to God. God in a big way. But when that happens, I think of what happened, uh, you know, Pastor Hank, I think of uh, the Welsh revival, what happened there. Evan Roberts, you know, they were having yeah. uh, all sorts of corruption in the government and crime was up. Speaking of corruption in the government, fucking seriously. Up, And, yeah. you know, when they had a revival, that was done. They even stopped the yeah. elections because of what was going on. Bet you guys didn't know this was over here. You have to fly to get it, but it's a it's a one up. It, the one up is not worth getting at all, but because it's it's such a pain in the ass to even get to, let alone like fly over, and it, it's a huge risk. But yeah, it's possible to get this. It's it's really difficult to get it and then get back like that. Not easy. Anyway, I got it. 
Okay, let's keep listening. Yeah. A move of God. Yeah. This is what we need in America. And why am I talking about this? Because we are going to Pensacola, February 16th and 17th. And where are we? Oh, God. Pensacola, Florida. That's where uh, Kent Hoven. Yeah, Kent Hoven lives. That's where Kent Hoven lives. I wonder if they're going to get Kent Hoven on. Um, he's pretty influential in the evangelical movement, but he's got a lot of burned bridges, Co uh, Hovind does. Especially, yeah, I don't know. So I'm not. I'm not sure if they're going to like see him or not or have him on, but that'd be an interesting one for sure. Especially after he went to jail for like 10 years for, for tax fraud and all kinds of other stuff. Oh my God, dude. Cops pick and choose. That's true. You're right. Um, insatiable glutton. You're right. They do. And, and they have that right to pick and choose. They can give you a warning. I've had tons of warnings from cops over various different things. One time I pulled out in front of a cop um, and turned right out of a Walmart and he pulled me over failure to yield but he let me off with a warning he gave me a warning and he didn't have to that was just him being a nice guy cops have the option of giving you a warning or not right they don't have to like give you a ticket every time that is their prerogative and I totally get that but a hundred miles an hour really a hundred miles an hour that that is a safety issue, okay? You can't let people go for a hundred miles an hour. That's reckless driving. That's putting people's lives in in danger at that point. There's no excuse for going a hundred miles an hour. Okay? No excuse for that shit. I mean, even ninety miles an hour is unsafe. It is unsafe. I don't care where you are or what you're doing. Or any of that shit. There's nowhere except maybe the desert in Nevada where that's acceptable. I don't give a shit. 100 miles an hour? Really? Just blatant, bald-faced political corruption right there. Love the show and 100 miles an hour is only 15 over in some places. That's true, but I know the Omaha area. 65 is the national um default i believe 65 so if other uh, unless otherwise posted highways speed limit is 65 now some places it's like 75 or whatever but uh i happen to know the area i happen to know like the omaha type of area and you know out in the boonies as they say you could expect people to go 80, maybe even 90, but not 100 and not in Omaha or not around Omaha or Lincoln. That's fucking insane. We go and we're going to be at Brownsville Church. That's right. The Assembly of God Church right there in Brownsville where the great uh, P Pensacola outpouring uh, <clears throat> began Father's Day 1995. We're coming there and listen, we're going to redig a well. We're going to redig a well, yes, we and we're going to dig a well not just to see revival happen, but we're going to dig a well in you, so that you un that's what she said. Understand the yeah. job you have to go. Well, I guess that's what he said, not what she said. Do so. Our events this year are different than what you went to last year, so that's why you need to come. They're two nights. Thursday night and Friday night, Friday during the day, you're going to have lots of training. And I hate that when I say training because that sounds really boring and I can't stand boring. These are not boring things you're going to go to. You're going to learn, but it's going to be fun. You're going to enjoy it. A lot of stuff happening. Uh, you just need to go register. GoVictory.com slash FP Live. You say, well, what kind of training is that? What kind of stuff? These flash talks, I'm calling them flash talks, okay? What you're going to learn from this fight, how to go... Clever naming convention, flash talks. Okay. Back to your house, wherever you live, and learn how to flip your school board so that your kids, if they're going to public school, you can start taking over the school board. And you go, well, that sounds like we're trying to take over the world. Yes, we are. I fully admit that. That's exactly what we're doing. We're going to, if this is the, this. Dude, that's deeply disturbing stuff. I, I know that. This is something you've probably heard before, but holy shit, dude. We're trying to take over the world. They want to take over school boards. They want to control everything. They want to control the government. This is, by no stretch of the imagination, the only instance of Christian nationalists laying out their plans for what they intend to do. 
with the country or with the world. Check this out. This is Tony Perkins, leader of the Family Research Council. I believe that Josh Duggar worked on the Family Research Council for a while. Uh, Tony Perkins, I think, is the founder of it. It's basically like a right-wing Christian nationalist think tank that gives policy. They, they basically write policy for Republicans and hand it to their aides so that Republicans can introduce bills that Christian nationalists want. So this is like a, a good example of Republican politicians just taking their cues from and listening to everything that that pastors say. This is like one link in the chain of a theocracy, basically. So this is Tony Perkins in the middle on the right, second guy from the right there. He's the leader of the Family Research Council, and he's going to tell us what his plans are for the country as a Christian nationalist. We should be you know, happy warriors. We were created for this. It wasn't like this is just something that happens to fall upon us at this moment. Yeah. We were created to be warriors for Christ, especially as men. We're to lead our families as warriors. Now, that terminology has been you know, maligned by the culture that we're, you know, these, um, you know, Christian warriors from a standpoint of we're trying to take over the world. Yeah, we are. The kingdom. Yeah, from a the kingdom of God. We yeah. They're trying to take over the world for the kingdom of God. And he says, for the kingdom of God, as though that makes it better. Well, I'm not trying to take it over for myself. I'm just trying to take it over for, for God. No, that makes it even worse, I think, honestly. Wherever you find credulity presented as a, a virtue, you will find charlatans looking for an opportunity to take advantage of it. I came up with that quote the other day. And that's what we see right here. You know, we see an example of Christian nationalists noting the fact that credulity is like a virtue here. Like, oh, people are encouraged to have faith. That's perfect for us because it means we have an opportunity to take advantage of that blind trust that people have in us. And that'll give us a chance to take over. It's disgusting, dude. So again, this isn't the first time they've just come out and, and explained their, their plan. I mean, this one with Tony Perkins, this came out um, early May 2021. So they've been saying it for years, honestly. And here we are listening to it all over again. This is the foundation. This nation was founded and the whole idea. No, it isn't. The idea of the Constitution is from the bottom up. How does that mean? The bottom up is that we change down here and that affects the, the, all the way up to the president. And that's what we're going to see happen. And this is going to equip you with the tools that you need to go back home. So bring your notebooks and your pencils and your pens because you're going to want to take notes. And listen, it's going to be great. Now, the daytime. Why don't you bring your mom and I'll meet you there? Time sessions are not on television. They're not on the net. We're not airing those. Uh, it's just the, the two night times uh, will be on the network and aired everywhere. Flashpoint airs. You'll see those. So I want to see you in Pensacola. It's free. It's a free event. People were saying, well, maybe we should charge because it's a smaller venue. I said, no, we're not going to charge to help save America. We believe in God to make up the difference. We'll take up a few offerings. Yes, but we're going to raise them. We're going to raise the opportunity for you to get invested in what God's doing through Flashpoint. And that's exactly what we're going to do, Pensacola. You can go to GoVictory.com slash FP Live right there on the screen. And you can see all of the events. We just recently added Nashville, Tennessee in May. And you know what? Every one of these events is going to be different, y'all. You need to come. Y'all, he really wants to connect with the lower middle class, doesn't he? Y'all, this dude's been filthy rich basically his entire life. He doesn't have a connection to the lower middle class that he's trying to connect to here. Just ridiculous. Y'all come, all right? Y'all come, all right? All right. So, in fact... Jesse Duplantis is going to come to Omaha. How about That's that? Right. How about that? Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about that. I thank you for asking me to come. You know, I've watched Flashpoint, been on Flashpoint, but I've never been to one of the actual meetings. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it too. And we're trying, we want you in another city uh, if your schedule will allow you, but we'll, we'll get with you later on that. Um, but every one of these is different. Every one of these is going to be a wonderful time. I, I'm so thankful to Kenneth Copeland. Dude, every one of these people are all charlatans. Every last one of them. 
They're all money-grubbing, prosperity gospel-preaching charlatans. But every one of these is different. Every one of these is going to be a wonderful time. I, I'm so thankful to Kenneth Copeland, my boss. He's the one who said, go do this, and he has just turned us loose, and we're going to do that. Yeah, Kenneth Copeland owns the network and the show, so. George and Terry can help make sure I stay within the borders. Terry is Kenneth Copeland's daughter, Terry Pearson's. And um, George Pearson's is her husband. So it's, look at this. I'm stepping on this cannonball and it's hurting me. That's a collision detection error, I guess, in Mario. Anyways, yeah, there it is again. George and Terry Pearson's are Kenneth Copeland's daughter and son-in-law. So, And don't get out of line. And so we're going to do that all across America. We're going to take this gospel to America. You're going to see a change. You come to Pensacola. Pastors are already talking about it. I talked to one today in Florida that's already getting other pastors and other churches involved. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is exciting times to live in, exciting stuff. Uh, Lance Wallnow, you're going to be there. Are you looking forward to this? I always look forward to it, Gene. It's great to be, you know, in the energy of a couple of thousand Flashpoint people. Everywhere you go, you run into people that say, Hey, I watch on Flashpoint. We're part of the Flashpoint Army. And, you, you know, the airports, et cetera. But when you're in the meetings where there's thousands at one time, it takes on the kind of the characteristics. It's almost like if you've never been to a MAGA Trump rally. It's like that, but it's more fun because MAGA is all politics. We get into the Holy Ghost. And, you know, it's a great blend. It's like this show on steroids. It's the political perspective, the prophetic analysis, and some fiery preaching, because you can't get a room full of people with preachers and a microphone and not have some preaching going on. So you just Like I said, these people are MAGA nutcases. This is the MAGA crowd that we're watching right now. So, yeah, I guess you could say it is similar to a MAGA rally in that they repeat everything that Donald Trump says all the time, 24-7. But yeah, um, it's uh, it's still just a, absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. I just don't want to miss it. Yeah, and, and let me tell you, if you, I, I know Lance, you've seen, we've shown clips of Lance speaking and doing a class before, and I know he did something uh, along that same line with Mario's meeting. You want to see. Talking about Mario Murillo, he's another televangelist nutcase. See what he's going to bring that day. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be on seven mountains and how do we get to the gates of influence but you don't you want to be there during the day on friday again it's all free be there Pas oh god dude seven mountains dominionism i know that th they just mentioned it so i gotta kind of explain what it is um in 1902 newspapers in czarist russia start publishing this document called the protocols of the elders of zion they came up with I don't know, like 15 or 18 of them, or I don't remember exactly how many. They claimed that they found these documents on dead Jewish soldiers, and there were like articles that describe how the Jews were going to like accomplish world domination. Now, this is completely made up. It was anti Semitic propaganda, obviously. There was no dead Jewish soldier. There were no elders of Zion. It was all completely fabricated from the ground up. But it was used to demonize a minority group within the country. And if there's one thing we've learned over the past couple of years even, it's that fascists and extremists love to blame all of their problems on minorities. Hitler, when he eventually came around even reprinted copies of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion and wrote about it in Mein Kampf, like talked about how the Jews are trying to take over and all this other stuff. But in 1923, about 20 years after it came out, it was discovered that the Protocols of the Elders of Zion was actually plagiarized, full-blown, copied and pasted, or the... I guess the writing version of copied and pasted, <laughs> the, the early 1900s version of copy and paste, straight from a, an 1854 satire book, a French satire book that didn't even mention Jews. It was just straight up plagiarized. 80% of it was plagiarized from this 1854 book, thus putting the final nail in the coffin, proving that this was completely forged. It was fake. It was just propagandistic bullshit created by, you know, anti-Semites to destroy the Jewish community. 
So that is what the Protocols of the Elders of Zion is. This is actually a copy of it right here. Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Now, it was compiled into a book in 1905 called Protocols of the Meetings of the Learned Elders of Zion. A little bit longer, but yeah, it, it's all fake. It was all completely faked. I'm not exactly sure how many protocols there are. Ten, at least. There may be more than that. Well, anyway, protocols includes things like, uh, just listen to like one or two lines here. In miserable Russia, the Jews are less than 5% of the population, yet they hold over 90% of the official positions. Russians and Jews are very much different, yet Russia is governed by a mere handful of unprincipled Jews. The 95% of Russians have only a 10% say-so about their own government, and even the 10% in office are but lickspittle, or fronts, to the domineering Jews. To the reasoning mind, such a condition of affairs seems impossible, yet the condition exists. In fact, a careful study to the protocols alone will clear up the mystery. Now that you've read that one sentence from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, a book supposedly discovered on a dead Jewish soldier written by Jews in power, listen to what this televangelist Lance Walna says. He's about to explain Seven Mountains Dominionism, or se the Seven Mountains Mandate, which is the televangelist's plan to take control of the country. I'm not joking. This is from early March 2022. 3% of the population, roughly 3 to 4% of the population, are radical leftist elites. 30% of the population are evangelical born-again Christians that are inclined to go towards Pentecostal language. I mean, we're really out there. 30% against 3%, but they neutralize the church because they're also in religion. They changed the definition of marriage, so they've taken over family. They've totally taken over academia, so the education institutions are teaching leftist theology or leftist ideology and silencing uh, conservatives. They're controlling government right now. They've taken over legacy media, Hollywood, entertainment, and, uh, and arts, and uh, now they've got Wall Street. These are the seven mountains, the seven areas of society that they want to take over to control society in a Christian nationalist state is what he's describing right now. This came straight out of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, directly lifted from it. Did Lance Walna lift it? I don't know. Somebody did and provided this information to him and he started repeating it. Somebody lifted it directly from Protocols. This is 3%. 30%. Of the, of the population is Christian. How is it that 30% are dominated by 3%? They have a worldview for bringing their kingdom here now. I'm dead serious. This came straight from protocols. Jews are less than 5% of the population, yet hold over 90% of the official positions. Russians and Jews are very much different, yet Russia is governed by a mere handful of unprincipled Jews. I mean, you're seeing similarities, right? There are other similarities. I can't find it at this moment, but there's another part that talks about Jews attempting to spread Darwinism and Marxism through society because they're wonderfully destructive ideologies. They're trying to spread them through society to destroy society. Does this sound familiar? Darwinism, Marxism, saying that they destroy society. The leftists are setting out to destroy it. Seriously. Word for word, the tactics being used on the right at the moment. That's what Protocols of Elders of Zion is. That's what it's all about. That's where a lot of televangelists are getting their ideas from. Directly, I don't know. Setting out to deceive? I don't know. Do, are they even aware of this document? I have no idea. But it's copied word for word in some situations, and it's uncanny. Oh, here's another one. The idea that Jews eat babies or that the elites drink adrenochrome from children. That's straight from Protocols of the Elders of Zion. QAnon is nothing more than a rebranded Nazi death cult. Every conspiracy theory you, you can come up with came from this document. The conspiracy theory that Jews eat babies or that they drink the blood of children, that's from Protocols, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. The idea that they control the big banks and the media and all of the other stuff, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It's from this document right here. The conspiracy theory that they try to cancel people that they don't like, cancel culture, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It's all from this. The idea that Marxism and Darwinism are evil and that they're trying to use it 
to destroy society? Protocols for the Elders of Zion. It's all from this. Every conspiracy theory in the past hundred years that you can think of. The Great Replacement, where they're trying to bring in other groups of immigrants to destroy our culture and to outweigh votes and things like that. Protocols of the Elders of Zion. The conspiracy theory that Jewish people are trying to enslave the world or, or whatever other thing. It's all from this book. Dead serious. This is where pretty much all anti-Semitism stems from. Or, well, I guess that's not exactly accurate. This is a compilation of all anti-Semitism from the past thousand years. It was all put into a book right here. And it was passed around Nazi Germany. And get this. It was passed around the Middle East by the KGB in the 20th century, passed around in Iran and Saudi Arabia and all of the other Middle Eastern countries in that area, Egypt and all of them, by the KGB to make the Middle East hate Israel even more. That's at least part of the reason why Iran absolutely hates Israel and why they're Holocaust deniers or, or, or not not Iran necessarily, but the leadership in Iran. That's why they're like that. Because the KGB passed these conspiracy theories around over the past hundred years. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be on seven mountains and how do we get to the gates of influence? So seven mountains dominionism, as he mentioned just now, is a plan for world domination lifted straight from the protocols of the elders of Zion. It is a plan for world domination that came straight from Nazi propaganda. Dead serious. That's what he's talking about right now. Anyway, let's keep listening. But you don't you want to be there during the day on Friday. Again, it's all free. Be there. Pastor Hank, I, I, the revival aspect of this is what gets me so excited about what can Amen. what we're looking to see happen right there in Florida. Amen. Well, I'm excited because every Flashpoint meeting is very unique. And uh, when I also heard that Jesse Duplantis was coming to Omaha, Nebraska, I actually busted a move. I was so excited, Jess, Jesse. And not only that, I'm excited because he brings a dimension of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we find at these meetings is God himself shows up. And when Lance teaches on the seven mountains, it brings the true perspective of what we, the body of Christ, the people of God, and we that are the populace of the United States of America, what we must do to take our country back. But I'm going to talk about the revival side real quick. And that is, you mentioned about um, you know, redigging the wells. Well, the Bible also talks about there was some wells that the Philistines, the Bible says, put dirt in. And so I feel like there's been a lot of dirt that our culture has thrown uh, at uh, us in America. A lot of things that have been happening that have been dirty politics. And I believe that when we go to Pensacola, Florida, where there was a revival, something of God is going to happen that is going to take that dirt and some of the stuff that's been in our nation and begin to pour out his spirit where we're not only going to see revival break out all across our country but reform we're going to see change that's what reform means and that's what i'm expecting to be like a a spark so to speak in uh in in pensacola there that's these people I, i'm dead serious i say this without a hint of irony these people are a rebranded nazi death cult really I mean, I, I don't know how you can see it any differently after finding that half their ideology and plan for world domination came straight from Nazi propaganda, directly from Nazi propaganda, it was lifted word for word. Seriously, it, it just it blows me away how the similarities between them and Nazi death cults going to begin to sweep across the nation. So I'm very, very excited. And lastly, Pastor Gene, you said yeah. you all need to come. That means you're, you're only announcing to the Southern people. So I'm in the North. You guys need to come. Now you're going to have North and South. Yeah, you, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. No, that's, that's New York. That's not the North. That's totally different. All right. You know, I, I, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a fun event. You're going to learn a lot. We're going to see God move. I'm believing like never before for signs, wonders, and miracles. We're going to see Amen. people get saved, healed, 
It's gonna, we're going to see it all. Amen. And you're going to go back home trained with stuff. Rick Green is somewhere right now spinning like a top because he's so excited. Uh, and yeah. we Rick Green is the leader of a, uh, what do you call it, like a, a, a nonprofit, I think, called Patriot Academy that's totally nutty, dude. Oh, my God, is it a nutty organization, I guess you'd call it. Is it? Yeah, I suppose you'd call it an organization. It's insane. Absolutely insane. They have something called a biblical citizenship test, uh, Patriot Academy does. So the whole goal of the Christian nationalist movement is to get to a point in the United States where you have to take a Bible test to be considered a citizen, basically. So what this nonprofit has done is set up a system or set up a test that can be given to people. Now, it's not legally binding right now that you take this test, but one day it might be. That's kind of the goal. That's the hope. One day that test might be binding. Just disturbing on so many levels the way that they view things and the way they're moving things into position and preparing. and It's just nuts, dude. It's absolutely nuts, honestly. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about what's happening in the world today. Uh, the last few days, it's it's almost, I find myself smiling anytime I turn on the television. Uh, you know, let me show you this. Uh, James Comer wrote this. I'm calling on the POTUS Chief of Staff Ron Klain to release the visitor log for President Biden's Wilmington residence and provide info about all the properties and locations searched, including the identities of the Biden aides conducting the searches. Of course. Ah, right. Okay, so... Donald Trump, uh, a few months ago, it was revealed that uh, Trump basically stole documents from the U.S. government, documents that were so highly classified they're not supposed to leave a secure facility. And he obstructed and refused to turn them over and absolutely made everybody's lives miserable over this and is now being charged with obstruction of justice, among other things. Now, Biden, when he was vice president, apparently had some papers, some classified papers. I don't know what level, certainly not uh, like the highest level of classification like Trump had, I would imagine. Those like, again, those are not supposed to leave a secure facility. He had some documents at his house that were discovered by his lawyer. And the moment that they were discovered, his lawyer turned them over, gave them to NARA, the National Archives as he was supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do in, in that event. So just to reiterate, Trump obstructed, lied, hid, and did everything he could to avoid turning this stuff over. Biden turned it over immediately. That's the difference here. But James Comer, this uh, what like congressman, I think, is obsessed with going after Biden for this. And when asked if he you know, Trump should be treated the same way. What does he say? Of course not. Deep hypocrisy. There is no moral consistency to be found in these people. None. First, we're talking about all of the uh, supposedly documents that were uh, classified that he's not supposed to have. Now, listen, there's one thing I want, and I've heard people say that, well, Trump did the same thing. No, listen. President Donald J. Trump was the president. So? Who cares? Biden was the vice president. What does that have to do with anything? He's trying to come up with this ridiculous excuse for Trump. He has the authority to, to classify and de- Yeah, he does. He's right. He does have that authority. But you actually, I'm sorry, but you actually have to tell people that you want this stuff declassified. You have to announce it to somebody to do the process of declassifying. He didn't. Trump claims he can declassify things at will just in his head. He can think it and it's declassified. Nonsense. That's what I've come to expect from these people. In my industry, they like to call it writing. They're Donald Trump writers. Declassify documents, all right? There's the biggest issue. Joe Biden was vice president. He doesn't have that authority. He's not supposed to have any of that stuff at his houses. Yeah, but he's president now. He can think it and declassify it instantly if he wanted, right? 
So, you know, we first we heard it once, and you remember that clip we played here, right here on Flashpoint, where we said it was a, an interview with Joe Biden, and what did he say? Uh, he said, "I." It is just absolutely irresponsible to do this. Yet look at what was going on. Now, it's not just one place. Yeah, well, here's the problem. Donald Trump took documents from secure facilities. That th This stuff wasn't supposed to leave the secure facility. These were human source classified documents. This is stuff that people would die if it got out. And Donald Trump just had it sitting around in the pool room. That's very different. Okay. Now, that being said, I'm not a hypocrite. I believe this should be investigated, and if Biden broke any laws, prosecute him. Charge him. Go through the process. Do what you got to do. If Biden broke laws, prosecute. If Trump broke laws, prosecute. I'm not making up excuses for anybody. If what he did was illegal, then do something about it for either one of them. This guy is sitting here doing everything he can to come up with excuses for why Trump is innocent in this whole situation. Just nonsensical garbage that spews out of their mouth 24-7. It's not two, it's three, and now I understand there's four. Let's go to the next, the next, uh, <laughs> the next clip here. Uh, Lucas Tomlinson says, breaking White House, is there no visitor's log from Biden's Wilmington home, Peter? Of course there's no visitor's log. Why would there be a visitor's log for his house? Ducey reports. Is really? There's no logs? Well, we've heard. I know. Surprising. I don't keep a visitor's log at my house either. Heard just recently the logs have been found. Isn't that interesting? Okay, don't trust a word out of his mouth. I have no idea what he's talking about. He's acting like Biden is this corrupt evildoer that, like, works with Russians to, like, I, I don't know, m enrich himself or something. Oh, but look, now you're wondering why is the Democrats, the leading Democrats in the, uh, it, where you, you were hearing so much about Trump this, Trump that, no, this is horrible, impeach, impeach, impeach. They've gone quiet. They've gone quiet. In fact, uh, let me show you what. Who's gone quiet about what? Nobody's quiet about anything. But Adam Shifty Schiff had to say, watch. The, the White House knew about this on November 2nd. So that was almost a full week before the midterm elections. We didn't learn about it. The public wasn't informed <clears throat> until this week. And it was only after uh, the story was, uh, you know, was out there. Reporters were asking questions. Should they have been more forthcoming? Should this information have been revealed earlier? Why was it revealed in the first place? I don't understand. Isn't this something that prosecutors should just handle and that's it? Or investigators or whatever? The DOJ is investigating. Why does it matter? Uh, I think the administration will need to answer that question. Uh, I'm going to reserve judgment until they do. But I think it's important to point out uh, that the Biden uh, approach was very different in the sense that um, it looks, uh, as far as we can tell, that it was inadvertent that these documents were in these locations. Yeah, Trump straight up stole the documents from the White House, just walked right out the fucking door with them. And, and I'm talking like documents that are so incredibly sensitive that people would die if they were revealed or if the information inside was revealed. And he was hosting foreign dignitaries, people with strong ties to the Chinese government. People with strong ties to the Russian government. Like, no fucking joke. Biden didn't have Chinese or Russian diplomats or dignitaries come to his house and, like, let him into the garage or anything, like, when he was hanging out with them. Like, people, I'm talking, like, Russian or foreign dignitaries, Russian and Chinese, um, like, dignitaries or, or, like, representatives were specifically trying to get into Mar-a-Lago intentionally because they knew they could probably get information out of Trump. Seriously. I mean, this is all well-known, well-understood, reported information. Dude, this, this guy is just fucking my shit up over here. Lance, mm. listen to Adam Schiff. He's now reserving judgment. How conservative of him. Uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Lance? He's not reserving judgment? Where did he get any of that? If Biden did something wrong, charge him. That's simple. I don't live in this cult mentality where dear leader is can do no wrong or any of that garbage. Like, that's not the way I see things at all. 
And it's disturbing to me that they don't see the difference here. Lance. <laughs> it's probable, Gene, that if we just took a breath and looked at this, we're going to find out that... By the way, uh, I'm sorry. By the way, all these people are full-blown propagandists. They do nothing but propagandize. So this is the right's response. For all intents and purposes, this is Donald Trump's response to Biden taking documents home or whatever other thing. This is his response. This is the angle that they will most likely take when dealing with like the, the propaganda or the media angle of this story. Uh, Delaware is actually advancing. There's a case on Hunter Biden. I think they're already... Uh, I couldn't possibly care less about Hunter Biden. He's not involved in the administration in any way. He means absolutely nothing to me or anybody else. To going through an official subpoena of information and documents to remember something. They know now with the midterms that the Republicans are going to go for a, a, a committee and evaluate the Hunter Biden laptop. Why? Got me. Nobody seems to know why. Why does anybody care about Hunter Biden and or his laptop? We'll never know. Completely irrelevant to anything related to the government. It is nothing more than a propagandistic attack on Joe Biden. That's it. I don't care about Hunter Biden at all. So they've got the laptop. They're looking at what documents are on the laptop that could incriminate Joe Biden. It's just a theory I've got. They now say... Oh, Oh, it's a theory he's got. He's assuming all of this stuff. Oh, my gosh. Where are the documents? His $2,500 an hour lawyers are going through his garage in Delaware next to his Corvette, rummaging through boxes. Why? Because they're... $2,500 an hour isn't that much for a lawyer. I mean, it's a lot. It is a lot. But they're the lawyer of the president, first of all. And second, they're probably... I don't know, White House lawyers or administration lawyers or something like Biden is not actually rich at all. I think he I think he said he's I, I don't remember what his tax returns showed something like five hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, that's probably rich. Yeah, I would say that's definitely rich, but it's not filthy rich. It's not what we've seen from other presidents in the past. It's not, you know, a billionaire or something trying to get all the email and paper trail connected to to his son. Dude, what does this say? U.S. will hit its debt limit Thursday, start taking steps to avoid default, Yellen warns Congress. Why is he showing us this piece of paper? Hunter, they're trying to pull it out of all these locations. Now, every document that comes out is, uh, is, is we're going to have to look at what it is. This is more of a big deal than people realize because suddenly people care about doc isn't that interesting they didn't give a shit before they weren't even talking about this or they were making up excuses for trump and suddenly they care suddenly it's a big fucking deal that documents go missing isn't that interesting i've cared the whole time people should be take this more seriously classified documents should not be like you know this easy to find in random places it should be a lot more serious. People should take it seriously. That includes Hillary Clinton, Biden, and Donald Trump. People should not be this lax with classified documents, really. Nobody should. It's absurd. It just goes to show you that, honestly, when you get to the top, people don't seem to give a shit about classified documents. They don't treat them as carefully as they should, period. No matter who it is, Republican, Democrat, doesn't matter. They don't treat classified documents carefully. As you're, you'll probably cover tonight, we're now discovering how the money was going from the Chinese government to Biden and to the Sun. The location in at the university. Okay, who is discovering that? And how did how was this discovered? I haven't heard a word about this. What's he talking about? Money is going from the Chinese government to Hunter to Biden. What? I mean, Hunter to Joe. I haven't heard this. It's completely made up. University of Pennsylvania, where one of the files was found, where they're getting documents out of it, uh, was paid basically uh, by a donation from $57 million from the Chinese Communist Party to the campus 
at least that camp has received the funds from communist China and then put up a Biden center over there where he only went six times and got paid like $700,000. Dude, this is completely made up. Does he have any evidence for any of this? Or is he just blindly making claims? That's kind of his MO. Again, this is the Trump response, basically, to, you know, the the document thing. This is how they make light of Donald Trump stealing documents from the U.S. government, incredibly deeply secretive documents. They make light of that, and then he hides it for months at a time. And then they lose their minds over Joe Biden turning documents over the moment he found them. Nowhere near as serious or nowhere near as classified as the documents were that Trump had. So the, the machinery is starting to unravel because we're seeing the financial trail connected to these locations. That's what makes this so interesting. It does make it interesting. And, uh, you know... It would make it interesting if any of this was true, like literally any of it. This is all completely made up. They have zero evidence for anything that they are saying right now. You just, the facts, who would have ever thought, Jesse, that this is, <laughs> the facts are stranger than fiction after, after yeah. what he said about how, you know, this is hard to believe and this is irresponsible, yet he's got this and more in his own. Do you think he knew what was going on? Uh, I think Biden knows a lot more than people are saying. I, I don't mean this to sound rude, but I really believe President Biden and his administration have, be, they are weaponized stupidity. I, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. They say one thing, do another, but their words come back and bite them. I believe they knew it all because, I, I, you know, if you really think about how the Democrats work, it's pretty easy. You know, if you think about it, they're trying to go through the documents, get them just like Hillary trying to burn up all the 33,000. Burn up 33,000 emails? You mean like Donald Trump literally cramming paper documents into his mouth and chewing and swallowing them? Is that what we're talking about? Or putting them in literal burn bags? Hillary Clinton didn't burn documents. What's he talking about? Again, if somebody did something illegal, charge them with a crime. Charge them with a crime. I don't care who it was. Trump, Hillary, Biden, whoever. I don't have this bizarre cult of personality mindset. If somebody broke the law or treated documents less carefully than they should have, charge them. Emails, and all. They, they do the same thing. They just put a different paper bag on it. But that's, to me, and I heard someone say it, and I like to say it, that's weaponized stupidity. When he did the 60-minute uh, thing talking about this, and now it's come back to bite him. And the thing I can't get over. 60-minute what? What's he talking about? It's like they live in like their own weird little echo chamber that nobody seems to be able to break through or make any sense out of. Like all of the news that he gets is completely disconnected from reality and has nothing to do with reality at all. Like nobody in the rest of the world has any clue what he's talking about. Nothing like nobody. It's all total nonsense. Over they put it in a locked garage with a Corvette. But I thought he was believing in climate control, man. Corvettes burn a lot of fossil fuels and, and a lot of it. It's just amazing to me that everything they're trying to do is turning against them. And I believe that's the Lord opened that up. And just is this is this like intelligent enough for me to even respond to? Or is this too fucking stupid to bother? I don't care what Joe Biden believes in. I'm sorry. I don't care what Joe Biden personally does. I mean, to some degree I do. But what I care about is Joe Biden and others pushing policies that will improve our situation with climate change. That's what I care about. I don't care if he has a Corvette. Ideally, he would use like a... a you know, an electric vehicle, and hell, maybe he does. No, he uses the Beast now, I think. That's the presidential vehicle. Biden doesn't even use that Corvette. He's trying to find some, like, hypocrisy or something. Like, it's all completely fabricated.
They live in their heads. Starting to come back and say, wait a minute, you said this, you said that. Now the media has to. They have to ask these questions. And I'm telling you what, I would, I think when they, when they appointed that special prosecutor to look at this, they ought to, that special prosecutor ought to look at, at, at that attorney general also and the Department of Justice. So he's got power and um, the people say you shouldn't do that. No. I'm sorry. Did he just say the special prosecutor should look into the Department of Justice? Is that what he just said? I think that's what he just said. The Department of Justice, Merrick Garland, the, I'm sorry, the Department of Justice head, Merrick Garland, just appointed the special prosecutor, you poor fool. Does he not, like, realize how any of this works? Is he completely oblivious? Oh, you do. We want a government we can trust, and we all know we can't trust the government we have right now. Well, Jesus, dude, just these people are disconnected from reality in so many ways. It drives me absolutely nuts. It drives me up a wall. Yeah, let me know what you think about these people. Let me know if you think that this is just pure unadulterated hypocrisy on their part or if there really is something there. If what Donald Trump did really wasn't so bad, but what Biden did was deeply terrible. Let me know in the comments.